Welcome to a totally out of practice episode of We <laughs> Only Look Thin. I am Catherine Weigel. I apparently am one of your hosts. I have a podcast called We Only Look Thin, is what I tell myself. Wow. And with me today is Donald Weigel. I don't know why you're out of practice. I'm super in practice. Oh, mindset I, matters. I've lost uh, about 100 pounds and I've kept it off for like three and a half years now. Congratulations. I, uh, if I remember correctly, I've lost about 145 pounds. I have to write all this down like it's in memento, like everything is kind of going backward, and I have to look at my arm to see what tattoo I've given myself about what my purpose is. It's funny, because before the show, you were saying that this was the most focused you've ever been in your whole life. (laughs) For for the untrained eye, for the untrained ear, uh, it's been a few weeks since we podcasted. Did you or did you not say that this is the most focused you've ever been in your whole life? I didn't, actually. I didn't. You did say that. You were trying to talk yourself. I was trying to talk myself into it. Yeah, you know, mindset matters. Uh, We, a few weeks ago, got very ahead on the podcast. Yeah, we recorded a bunch of them all within a short period of time, but we haven't actually recorded one in like three weeks now. Yeah, and so today we were on a walk because we walk and that's what we do. I'm like, well, I guess we need to keep podcasting. I can't remember. We we apparently are funny. We're inspirational. And I have to remind myself of all these things (laughs) because right now I just feel like a woman sitting in my living room trying to talk into a microphone. Well, I feel like a professional super podcaster is how I feel. Congratulations. No, I do too. I know I'll get the hang of it. It's a little, it's weird not being on stage uh, after so many weeks. Well, at least we've uh, kept up with the weight loss and fitness habits because we did do a six mile walk this morning. We did. Humble brag. Humble brag. That wasn't a humble brag. That was just sort of a brag brag. Brag brag. (laughs) But uh, anyway, so hello and welcome. And we're, we're super excited here today. Uh, we, I believe... I think this might be the best podcast we've ever done. Probably. I, I mean, look, you people are in for a treat, really. Well, we, uh, we keep it fresh. Yeah. And, uh, part- funky fresh? Sure, yes. No yeah. one would really call us funky, but sure, why not today? Uh, from what I remember, we did... This is the second part of a two-part episode. Oh, um, yeah. We had to re- really uh, step back and kind of remember what we talked about on the first time. It's very inspiring, turns yeah. out. So we're going to remind you, just like we reminded ourselves, of what we talked about on the last episode. It was great. It was. So we started by talking about starting over after you slip on weight loss. Maybe you've slipped. Maybe you've never slipped and just have never started. It applies to both. All um, the same. But uh, but basically, on the last episode, if, uh, if you remember, uh, we talked about how showing up means that you care about your health. If you're listening to this, there's some part of you that wants to stay focused or get refocused. See, look, we showed up. We showed up to the microphone. <laughs> Phones. We care about our health and fitness and the listener's health and we fitness. We do. Um, but when you have lost your focus or your progress, just like on the podcast, this is very helpful for recording a podcast. Um, you can feel a little bit of shame and embarrassment for slipping back, like me, forgetting how to podcast. Um, <laughs> but when you've slipped on your weight loss goals, you can ask yourself some questions to gain clarity on why you might have slept what changed we haven't recorded a podcast in a month Uh, (laughs) our new our new podcast is about how to stay on track with your podcast (laughs) um so again if you've slipped what changed what did you stop doing what habits changed for the worse not podcasting um (laughs) What life circumstances changed? Um, But again, we can also think about any failure as actual feedback. We did an episode called Failure as Feedback. Oh, yeah. Um, So if you have slipped, if you're up on the scale, if your focus has fallen away, uh, it's an opportunity to look forward. We're not defined by our past, but what we do with the future, Donald. That's right. This whole episode is about the future, but we'll, we'll save that for the future. We sure, yes, we'll <laughs> save it for the future. Like in like two minutes, we'll get to the future part. Yeah, yeah, we are going back to the future right now. Donald said I had like one minute to do this preamble, so I'm I don't have a clock out, but he's I gave, already. I gave you fifty seven seconds, and you've uh, you've well exceeded. He's it. looking at his Fitbit <laughs> and like doing the like time is up <laughs> situation. So I want to take it slow and smooth, but Donald wants me to hurry TikTok. up. Tick tock. I know it just makes me want to go slower and slower. Yeah. Uh, okay, so failures feedback, Donald. But then we can also ask ourselves about our our past habits. 
is what we were doing sustainable? It was not sustainable for us to record like five podcasts in one weekend because I, I can't do that right now. I don't know what I was on before, but it, right. it was it was a lot of caffeine. But is what we were doing sustainable? Did you come in too hot? Did you have unrealistic expectations? Did your circumstances change? Did you ask too much of yourself? Did you get discouraged? Uh, I know I've been all of those things. So check the boxes. Yeah, absolutely. And and look. Part of the underlying um, uh, point of this, and, you know, Catherine is joking around about being out of practice for podcasting, but you can get out of practice for many, many things. And, you know, maybe I'm jumping ahead too quickly here, but you were talking about this morning how you, uh, like a year ago, you had been doing a certain level of workout. Yeah. And, and that you haven't been doing that lately. And then you tried to do the full version yesterday. And what happened? Uh, I'm very sore today, which is probably <laughs> part of why I can't. So this doesn't count as part of my 57 seconds because no, my, no. so we're, we're pausing the timer. <laughs> this is off the clock. <laughs> Just for the record, I'm not actually timing it. <laughs> sure, Jan. <laughs> you make me sound like a monster. No, you're wonderful. Thank um, you. Um, so I have dialed back on my resistance training. <laughs> I have resisted my resistance training. I've been doing a minimum. I had been doing uh, a year ago, I was doing about 30 minutes of resistance training Monday through Friday. And then recently I decided that was not my priority. So I was doing maybe a five minute workout video. Turns out five minutes is less than 30 minutes. Yeah. But I decided two days ago that I was going to start going back into resistance training. So I did the Blogilates that she has like a 20 and a 30 minute workout video. Turns out I am very sore and I am out of practice. And it turns out that I came in a little bit hot the last two days and yeah. realized that when I actually got back on track, I was thinking, okay, I'm going to go back to the 30 minutes because that's what I was doing a year ago. But it turns out I don't have the muscle strength that I did a year ago. And so I did the full workouts. And today I was really tired. Yeah. And everything kind of hurts. And I know better. I remember when I first started doing the blog Blogilates workouts, I said, you know what? Start with 10 minutes. Build up your, you know, for the first week, just do half the video. Keep it simple. I forgot to do that because I didn't really pay attention to what I did a year ago. So now I'm really sore. So I'm going to have to recover for a couple of days before I can go back to it. But this is a good lesson about coming in hot when you refocus yourself because I definitely did that. Yeah. And something similar happened to me um, at the beginning of 2020. I was unemployed for for most of the first half. And I actually got into like super good shape for a 51 year old man, I was doing a lot of strength training, a lot of push-ups and stuff, and I got a new job in the same uh, business, uh, television business, but a new job in July of 2020, and I basically stopped doing all of it. And so I recently, just earlier this week, actually finished um, listening to the audiobook of the BJ Fogg book, Tiny Habits, which I, I feel like I'm going to end up talking a lot about on this show uh, coming up. And, you know, he suggests that you just you start these things very, very small. And so I I made my new habit just to do two push ups and a, a 15 second plank to start. I was doing like 30 push ups and a two minute plank, um, you know, a year ago. So anyway, the point here is that I even just doing two push-ups after not doing for yeah. so long, it was really eye-opening. Like, there's this part of me for the last year that just had it in my head that I still had it, that it was just, you know, I would start doing it again and it would come right back, but it really feels like work. But I am very happy and I am celebrating the fact that I am restarting this habit and that I've now figured out a way to at least very slowly work it back into my life. And I think that that is sort of part of what we're talking about here with, you know, getting restarted. Well, and you know what? This is just you and me right here. There's no one else listening, so I'm just going to say it. Yeah. You were doing the BJ Fogg, like, just getting started thing, and I was like, that's great. But you know what? I'm going to do a 30-minute workout. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be fine. And you even said at one point, like, oh, I, you know, I see you doing the longer arm workouts or whatever. And, you know, I know I, I don't want to put in that much effort, but I can do one. And I was like, well, we're on different journeys. And so <laughs> I'm really sore. And here is Donald is making. You were looking down on me from your throne of smugness. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. No, it wasn't smug. I was just like, no, 
oh, I've got this. Like, I'm willing to put in 30 minutes. Like, Donald yeah. is willing to put in 30 seconds. Yeah. I'm willing to put in 30 minutes. Turns out, uh, I, I bit off more than I could bark or whatever that. <laughs> yes, that is the expression. <laughs> bit off more than you can bark. Sure. Okay. So, um, anyway. So, now my 57 seconds is going to start back up again. Okay. I'm okay? starting the stopwatch and once the again. the emotional uh, stopwatch. <laughs> the emotional 57 <laughs> seconds. So, um we can get caught, and this this kind of ties into everything we were just talking about. Um, going back to what we talked about last week, we can get caught up in toxic nostalgia. It felt easy before, but it feels hard now. I like my workout. Yeah. Um, I never had a problem before, but now suddenly it's a problem. It seemed, you know, tracking calories before seemed really easy. Now it doesn't. Also, we can invoke loopholes and limiting beliefs like we talked about last week. Maybe this is just the way I'm supposed to be. Maybe yeah. it's just, turns out it's just my habits and I pay a price. It's eroding habits. I'm, I'm up on the scale uh, higher than I've been in a while. Still very reasonable, good amount of weight loss. But it turns out if I don't track, this is a spoiler, if I don't track calories and if I just go back to the seeing what my body feels like, I go back to eating a lot of food and gaining yeah. weight really quickly. So where we left you off last week was a question, what matters to you about your weight? Like what actually, not what society thinks, not what your doctor thinks, but what about your lifestyle actually matters? Um, yeah, we left it with a thrilling cliffhanger yeah. to let you think about that for the last week. So what emotional limitations, physical limitations, or you know, general non-scale limitations do you have that keep getting in the way of your happiness? Because it actually does matter. Um, so, and, and we told you, spoiler, or no, this is the, the rest of the cliff of the cliffhanger, um, <laughs> that we were going to actually talk about the future in this episode. So now 95 minutes into this episode, we are going to talk about the future. Any show can give you a cliffhanger. We're going to give you the rest of the cliff. <laughs> <laughs> I just imagine it's like... Um, on the old Batman and Robin series, like them looking like they're climbing up. Oh, a building, yeah, up a building. I love that. Oh, my gosh. Didn't celebrities poking their heads Sammy out Sammy Davis windows. Jr. Oh, there, were, there oh. were tons of celebrities that would poke their heads out windows and ask them questions. And Oh, that <laughs> yeah, was, it was so great. magical. Half of which I, I'm sure I didn't recognize when I was a kid. But I know. We actually, we were at a, a flea market last weekend. Let's call it a flea market. But we and shall. Someone was selling, I think it was like... Twelve hundred dollars or two thousand dollars, a Batmobile. Oh yeah, like, ridey car that they. Would oh, have out it was in like one of those one of those store. supermarket grocery store tours that you you know that cost like a quarter or fifty cents to. And it, and it actually shakes up and down. played the yeah. Batman theme song, which was uh, a copyright issue, which is why they couldn't put it out. Yeah, I show. wanted to trade the the guy my actual car for it, but oh Catherine gosh, wouldn't it let was me. So cool. <laughs> yeah, it was really cool. Yeah, we have issues, but uh, yeah, Batman. Okay. Okay, it. now weight loss and fitness, and oh, we only right, look right, thin. Right, 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 right. Okay, <laughs> look, people. Some people come for the comedy. So, yeah, ha, ha 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 ha. You got it. Here you go. Here you um, go. So, getting back on track. How fitting. How fitting, indeed. So now it is time to look forward, Donald. If we, and this is something that I've done also recently on some other podcasts, thinking about your actual future, you become the person you're going to be. By doing the thing that person does. Yeah. You don't suddenly become a new person. It's not like a movie. I know you're in the business of TV, Donald, where I people am. just sort of become new things. There's the a montage, business of show. The business of show. But we actually become the people we want to be by doing the things that they do. You don't magically know how to play the piano or do a sport or learn a new language or a new skill by just imagining it to be so. Right. It takes practice. And the way you become proficient is by doing the things that a proficient person does. And and you have to ask yourself at, at a really root level, like, how do you want to identify yourself? Do you want to identify as somebody who would help an elderly neighbor shovel their driveway? Or do you want to identify as somebody who just looks the other way and stays in their home? Do the same thing with weight loss and fitness. 
actually ask yourself, do you want to identify as somebody who sits around and doesn't want to do anything and has to take naps all the time and just sits eating in front of the television? Or do you want to identify as somebody who's active and actually enjoys doing things and getting out and and is able to move and really enjoy their life? Well, and here's the thing. If we think about, and this is kind of where it ties into, if we think about the kind of person that we want to be six months from now, say you, you say you want to lose 20 or 30 pounds or you want to get into a regular walking habit, Imagine that you are putting in the work that that person does. So what does a person who weighs 30 pounds less do? What does an active person do? If you imagine yourself doing a 5K, what does it take to do that? And if we like, and I know this is kind of hokey, but write an emotional letter to yourself. Yeah. Uh, Like actually sit down, like you can do this in your head, but it's probably most effective if you actually sit down, not if you're driving, but (laughs) sit down and actually write yourself a real letter and ask yourself, like, look at yourself six months from now and imagine the person that you want to be and write down, like, what did that person do? Write a letter to yourself and say, like, what did you do to achieve your goals? Yeah. So what limiting beliefs did you let go of? How did you show yourself grace? What boundaries did you decide to put in place? Like, and, and you know, we can do this in many different parts of our lives. We can do it for business. We can do it for health. But like, oh, my gosh, Catherine, you just finished your first 10K. You know, that yeah. that required like you finally stuck to that program, the the C to 5K program or 10K program that you wanted to do. You you paced yourself, you stretched, you did yoga to support your goals, you got good running shoes, you cut down on your snacking at night, like all the different things that that person would do. It actually takes the effort to do it. And if that seems too ambitious, maybe it would just be a victory for you to be the kind of person who tracks all their meals every week. And like, how can you go from what you're doing now, which might be tracking nothing, to being somebody who actually, like, t- you know, figures out how many calories they're putting in every day? Like, what steps did you take to get there? And and imagine that and write it down. Well, and for me, too, as I'm thinking about it, you know, I remember the first week that I started tracking calories back in January of 2016. And it felt like someone put one of those dental, like, r- radiation blankets <laughs> on me. <laughs> oh, my I God. I was just like, oh, this is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. Like, w- this is so unfair. It's so awful. But, like, just imagining if I this is going back to the future, Marty McFly, your parents, blah, 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 whatever. <laughs> um, if I, if the me of six months from then had written me a letter and been like, Catherine, you won't believe it. Like you wanted to lose five pounds to fit back into your jeans. You have lost 50 pounds. Yeah. Like no joke. And guess what you did? You consistently tracked. When you gained weight that one time, you decided that you weren't going to give up. You realized that weight gain was part of the process. You also learned that you have boundary issues and that it was super helpful to stop eating emotionally. You started like acting on, you know, instead of gathering information and just learning about how to lose weight, you actually consistently walked your daughter to school every day and you closed the kitchen at eight o'clock. Like if I had written that to myself, like what, are you kidding me? I did all that, that's amazing. But we can really think about, you know, like for me, I'm, I'm up on the scale a little bit if I write a letter to myself in six months, maybe you could think about yourself too. Maybe we could do a live letter. Dearest Catherine Weigel. Yeah. I'm very formal when I write to myself. Can I write a letter to you about things I'd like you to do in the next <laughs> six months? <laughs> oh, oh, we'll, we'll talk about that. Dear Catherine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> in quotes for some reason. This is, this is getting dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I actually, if I'm thinking about, okay, where do I want to be in six months? Like, honestly, yeah, I would really like to continue feeling strong. And that will require consistent workouts and stretching. I would really like to be back down, you know, maybe five, eight p- pounds by then. What will that take? Yeah. That will take 
closing the kitchen at eight o'clock. Guess what? I was saying that five years ago also. Yeah. That will take not randomly eating bites, licks, and tastes. That will take not eating our daughter's food. That will take limiting my sweets at night and limiting my alcohol. And guess what? If I read that letter to myself that I wrote just now to my future self or my past self, you know, the, the logic of it and the time thing, it's its own loop. I don't understand it altogether. But if I don't want to put in that work, then I don't yeah. have a problem. And then I don't have to do anything. And then maybe weight loss isn't the thing that I want. What about you, Donald? What would you like to do in the next six months? Well, you know, uh, um, sadly, I'd like to steal most of what you just said. <laughs> and, you know, I would really like to keep up with the the push-up and plank habit, perhaps build on it, expand on it. I would like to also be down probably at least five pounds uh, in the next six months. Very interesting that we're both sort of up five pounds. I know, Mm. I know. Yeah, it's pretty interesting. (laughs) (laughs) It's your fault. (laughs) It's my fault. Yes, that's what we're going to agree on. You're making me secret eat. Yeah. No, that's, it's my responsibility. It is my responsibility as well. But I think it's it's very similar. You know, I, I was at this, this great place uh, physically a year ago, and I think that I'm still in a really good place mentally, but, you know, really just cementing some of those habits back in on track that have slipped a little bit over the last year. Well, and that's the thing. It's sort of what habits have slipped that you haven't even realized, because that for me is such a big issue. Habits can shift so slowly that we don't even know that the change is happening. I realized that I have been more liberal in like, I'll just add a tablespoon of oil and I don't have to really track it because you like, it's just vegetables. It'll be fine. It's 120 calories a tablespoon. Little things like that add up. Why am I up on the scale? It's definitely perimenopause. It's not fair. My body is adjusting. Like, no, dummy, you're not tracking honestly. Boo-hoo. How come I can't use the perimenopause loophole? (laughs) You're suffering from my suffering. Yeah. Um, But, you know, going back to why this all matters, what freedom have you found in your life by sticking to your habit goals? I feel so much better when I stick to my goals, when I don't wake up with heartburn or, you know, a food hangover from eating too much. And that doesn't matter. Like, it's not the number on the scale. It's sort of the mindset and the focus that I have. And if I want to maintain the lower weight of being five to eight pounds less, I have some work to do. And it's possible. It's not impossible. It's not my age. It's not, you know, perimenopause, like I said. It's just either I want to do the habit or I don't. And this none of this is a punishment. Like none of us are here because you know, we hate ourselves. We're here because we feel like there is the possibility for improvement, which there totally is. I'm going to bring up BJ Fogg again. Yeah. In his book, he says repeatedly, we change best by feeling good, not by feeling bad. So, you know, Catherine likes to say no one has ever hated themselves thin. And you really do have to love yourself and celebrate yourself to make this work. It works best when you do that. No, for sure. And, you know, and I asked this at, I was going to say at the beginning, but it was somewhere near the first third, but that doesn't sound as, uh, as exciting. Yeah. But I said, we become the person we want to be by doing the things that person does. And sometimes it can be hard to remember what that person does, even if you've never actually had the experience. How do I know what that kind of person does? But we've got some examples of, you know, and we've talked about it before, what we want less of in our lives and what we want more of in our lives. So this might be a good opportunity to really think about what your future self will be doing to maintain your weight loss and your mindset. Yeah, and so you might want to say to yourself, I need fewer instances of quitting tracking. Yeah. (laughs) In my life. I know that that's not the best English in the world. No, but it's, you know, that whole thing of like, oh, tracking is just hard. I don't like, oh, blah, blah, blah. blah. We did an episode recently, uh, Inbox Hero Zero. Inbox Hero and Inbox Zero. Where we talked about like tracking is the biggest return on investment and it takes the shortest amount of time. Yeah, in the Inbox whole world. Hero was the one where we really talked about that the most. Right. But you know, it takes 10 minutes a day and it it yields 95% of your weight loss results. Like sign me up. So less quitting tracking and more consistently. More consistent tracking, exactly. 
Um, and then you may want less revenge eating in <laughs> yeah. your life and more of asserting your needs. Yeah. I know that, you know, I spent years and years of my life, like something would go wrong. Somebody would, would say something to me that would hurt my feelings or something. And I would, you know, in, in air quotes, get revenge yeah. by eating food. And I was really only just punishing myself. Um, you may also want to do less grazing and more of planning your indulgences. You know, I it feels so good to have an indulgence in my life that I've planned for, that I've worked into my daily calories, and that doesn't just derail me and throw me completely off track because that's what I used to do most of my life. Yeah, we've talked about it a lot, my issue with Lay's potato chips. Uh, I still have a problem with Lay's potato chips, and I realized that they just are something I'm probably going to have to break up with at home. Yeah. But having a planned indulgence of like, all right, you know you do best when you have them outside the house. If you go to a restaurant, get a sandwich, a hoagie, a grinder, yeah. one of those things, have it outside the <laughs> all house. All of those things. But I just can't, like, even after all this time, am I going to just keep gaining weight because I like Lay's potato chips now? Like, I think that's just not something I want to do. So I'm going to have zero Lay's potato chips in the house and uh, more accountability and maybe more chips out of the house. Yes, indeed. So again, what you want less of in your life. I'm going to do less sitting and scrolling, and I'm going to do more early morning walks, a oh, yeah. little more stretching, a little more yoga, that kind of thing. I'm going to have fewer high calorie drinks and enjoy more refreshing zero calorie water that is another one that you can do yeah um i am going to stop hiding when things get hard and lean into support whether it's podcast whether it is walt place wlt place we only look thin place our online accountability group i know sometimes when things get hard we want to hide until we're magically better and yeah. fixed and then we show up i know i used to do that at the doctor i won't go to the doctor until i've lost this 10 pounds because i don't want to feel the shame of it. Leaning into support instead of pulling away from it really does matter. Another thing to watch out for is you want less hiding from the scale. Oh. That's one of the big danger zones for me or danger signals for me. If I start avoiding the scale, then I know, like I know that I'm in trouble because I don't want to see the bad news that's on it. So more consistently weighing myself. And I'm not saying you don't want to be obsessed about it. You don't want to do it like several times a day either, but you know, I pick a day, I have one day a week that I weigh myself every day and I just promise myself that I do not skip it. And then another one is have less of giving up when things get tough and more at looking at data as feedback. So whenever things are hard, I would constantly, you know, I would like stay on a plan and I would be good in air quotes for a few weeks, a few months, whatever it was. And then Something in my life would change. Something would get hard. The plan would get hard. Somebody would be mean to me. And I would just use all of it as an excuse to give up all of the progress that I had. And I just want less of that in my life and more of actually like looking upon that as data and just getting right back on track. Well, and I think too that that ties into motivation. I'm going to bring up BJ Fogg. BJ Fogg, Your what? Donald's friend of the show. Yeah. He talks about motivation being a wave. And do we all know about waves, Donald? I mean, unless you're in a wave pool that never ends. Yeah. Waves crash. Yeah. And motivation crashes. And it's so easy to give up when your motivation is gone. And that's really when we have the opportunity to dig deep and really be like, all right, this is the part where it gets hard and this is where I'm going to lean into it. So often we confuse motivation with the actual habits. Yeah. And it turns out that they're totally disconnected. And we, we've talked about, you know, the motivation bus, motivation mobile, whatever, that motivation is fleeting. We really see what we're made of when things get tough and when we lean in, that's when the real magic of weight loss and weight maintenance really uh, really happens. So as we sort of finish this out, you know, we've given a lot of examples of less and more and how to reframe things, the different things that we can do in small steps. You know, we don't have to track 
every single thing if we're just getting back on track. We don't have to come in super, super hot, but we can really look at the different things that we can do to get back on track. I know that there are things for me that I can do. Yeah, you don't have to figure all of this out overnight. And one of the things that's always been daunting for me in my life is the idea that I have to go from zero to perfect overnight. And the idea of that has always kept me from accomplishing things. And when I realized that I could do this in baby steps, that I could just gently, like one at a time, add a new habit to my plan, that's when everything really clicked and when I was really able to do this and make it stick. Yeah. So I think in all of this, when we're feeling down on ourselves, when we get on the scale and we see a number that we don't like, I sure did on Monday, didn't like what was on the scale, and I was feeling really down about it. And the thing with that is that we can feel like a victim so easily. We can feel like a victim to the world around us, family issues, finances, our weight, you know, it's just not fair. It's all too much. But really, we have the opportunity to realize that it is a privilege to take care of our bodies. Like, we are not doing this because, I mean, sure, your doctor might say something about your health, but really, what greater gift is there to actually take care of your body? Like, it has served, like, if you think about it, I look at pictures of myself when I was a little kid. I'm like, those are the same elbows. Like, I have the same little knees and the same toes and the same whatever. And like, I can honor my body. It's not like I can break up with it. I have the opportunity to keep it flexible, keep it nimble, keep it well hydrated, feed myself well, and just find some symbiosis in there of really knowing that like hating myself to the grave is not going to help anyone. No. And the more I lean into investing in myself, it is not a punishment. It is not, you know, like, oh gosh, I got to do blah, blah, blah. Like, This is really a gift that we can give ourselves. And at some point, if we don't take care of ourselves, like we can lean into the, you know, well, Donald had diabetes. Like, sure, we can look at things as health scares or gosh, my blood pressure is high or diabetes or whatever. But when we realize that it is an opportunity for us to practice self-care, it feels so much better. We are not here out of punishment. We are not here, you know, because society says whatever. Donald and I are actually here because we care about our mobility. We care about our flexibility. And we care about how we're going to grow old, which is already happening right now in front of our (laughs) eyes. Um, So really, you know, think about why you're here. Think about what you can add to your life. Not, oh, well, now I can't have Lay's potato chips. You know what? I do a lot better when I don't have Lay's potato chips. Yeah. I have an opportunity to cut out that, you know, delicious chip out of my life because honestly, I want my health more than I want a potato chip. Yes, indeed. And we want you to listen to this show more than we want a potato chip as well. (laughs) (laughs) And we're also here because we care about each and every one of you. Uh, And I, I do truly mean that. And I would love if you are struggling with your weight loss and fitness, I would love it if you would be able to, uh, to overcome that. And, and look, Catherine and I are not fixed. We're not done. But I really feel like we have transformed our lives through gentle changes and adding habits one at a time. And I really believe that you can do that, too. One of the things that you can do is listen to every episode of this show. Hooray! Um, And uh, thank you so much for doing that. You can find all of our episodes wherever you found this one. Uh, Please subscribe. Please also uh, tell somebody about the show if you've gotten something out of it. We would really appreciate it. You can find all of our episodes at our website, weonlylookthin.com. Yep, and if you are at our fun website, it's, it's, it's not super fun, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, the website's all fun. It's oh, not. It's super it's, fun. It's, it's functional, but you know, what are you going to do? Uh, there is a, a little tab that says join our support group where you can find out more about Walt Place, We Only Look Thin Place. It is an online Facebook-based accountability and support group for women. Uh, I am super proud of it. We do two to three Zoom meeting coaching calls a week. Uh, there's lots of opportunity for accountability and support. And you all know, Facebook is a place. My 97-year-old grandmother's on Facebook. I don't want necessarily her knowing all my business right. on the Facebooks, but 
being in Walt Place, it's private um, and it's super supportive and it's a great place for accountability. It is not a weight loss plan, but it is weight loss support. If you would like more information on that, again, go to our website and we have two different subscription options, a monthly option with a three-day complimentary trial and a three-month option with a seven-day complimentary trial. So um, join us uh, and see if it's the right fit for you. I'm super proud of it. I am super proud of it as well. And even if you don't think our website is super fun, Walt Place is super fun. Oh, it sure is. (laughs) No, it is. Also, you can follow us on all of the social media platforms, including Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at We Only Look Thin. Yep. And you can send us an email if you have uh, questions. It takes a little while to respond, uh, but I promise we still will. Uh, but you can send us an email at We Only Look Thin at gmail.com if you have show suggestions, um, if you want to tell us how awesome and rad we are. That's also good. Yeah, we or love that. If you have any questions for us, we're happy you know sometimes we make uh, episodes out of questions we receive from listeners so uh, so you can contact us there we sure do and uh, if you're feeling a little bit generous and have a few spare moments if you could go to apple podcasts and give us a rating and even better yet say a few words and leave us a review it really helps us out it spreads the word of the show and we get boosted in search results when people are looking for shows like ours. Um, you know, Apple kind of, uh, regardless of what platform you're listening on, Apple kind of still rules the podcast world. And uh, it really helps us out to have ratings and reviews on that format. Yeah, I think we're at 471 star reviews, ah, which is pretty maybe cool. Maybe you'll wanna... get us to 500. Oh, my gosh. I want to get to 500 so much. Yeah, me Can too. Can you help us out? And do that, please. Every time I go onto it, I actually try to give ourselves a star. I don't think it registers it more from one device, but you know, it can't hurt. Just to give myself five stars, boost my mood. So. <laughs> and it feels good doing it. So if you still are trying to figure out the difference between something that is funky fresh and regular <laughs> fresh, just remember that Catherine and I are an, an inspiration Asian. The information that you hear on this podcast is for informational purposes only. The hosts are not medical professionals. You should always consult with your doctor, nurse, or other certified health professional before beginning any diet or fitness program.